Hi, I'm Jacob Barr. I am a Southern Utah University graduate student and I uh, am doing the Bornoff workshop assignment. First, uh, I need to explain the string cycle form. Um, that is playing any patterns or any songs that we learn, any exercises on all four strings of your string instrument. For a violin exa example, playing it on the G and then D, A, E, then repeating the E and going back down to A, D, and G on all four strings. And that's how the string cycle works. When you're playing it with a large group, you're gonna do it many times and switch it up each time. Um, for example, if you do detache de four bows on each string, um, you do the cycle, and then when you do it again, um, let's say you'll do it only two, or you'll do it faster. And then once you do a large group, you'll just focus on one section, like violins, a smaller group. Then go back to large group, then small group violas, then large group. Or you'll do bass and cellos together, and then all large, you know, etc. Um, it's when you get into exercises, um, you give the students a chance to do a solo, ask if anybody wants to play a solo, do the string cycle on their own, and then give everybody a chance to do that uh, if they would like to. Don't force them, but that's uh, these large group, small group, and solo work on these uh, exercises, doing the whole string cycle is gonna build technique uh, and it's gonna refine um, this, their tone, all of their skills uh, this, with whatever exercise you're doing. Next, uh, finger patterns. Um, there are five finger patterns in the Bornoff instruction. Um, the first finger pattern is like a minor scale, the beginning of a minor scale. Um, you use, uh, you have a whole step, then a half step, then a whole and a whole step. On violin, you would use these four fingers. On cello uh, and bass, that might look a little bit different. Um, then finger pattern two, you have uh, two whole steps, then a half step and a whole step. So it's a lot like the beginning of a major scale, going up five notes and down five notes on all these patterns. Okay, and then uh, pattern three has three whole steps, then a half step, much like the Lydian scale has a raised fourth, and goes to the fifth, um, and go back down. And then the pattern four, you have, you start with a half step, um, and then three whole steps. And then pattern five is a lot like the four. You start with a half step, you have, but then you have two whole steps and then you end with a half step um, on pattern five. And that, is, those are the finger patterns, born off finger patterns. Finger patterns are helpful tools for teachers and students in learning finger positions of all sorts. And when um, they, need to play a scale or any song in any key, they'll already have experience with all finger positions where they're gonna put their fingers and um, all the patterns. And, and anyway, it'll make playing music down the road a lot easier. Okay, and then three bowing strokes, uh, born off bowing strokes were, uh, first detache, it's kind of a uh, broad and separate bow, but it's continuous, not slurred. There are uh, staccato, it's kind of like detache, but you stop for each bow. Uh, uh, uh. Um, then lastly, we have spiccato. Spiccato is, uh, for beginners, it's simplified. You just bounce at the frog and you lift, you, know, you bounce the bow on the string. Um, and those are the three types of bowing strokes. This is uh, the combination bow, detache.
staccato. Oh yeah, spiccato. Finger pattern one on G and D string. Pattern two. Pattern three. Hot cross buns.
Au clair de la lune. I'm actually going to do how dark is the sky, just kind of switch things up. Now here's Marilyn, we roll along. <laughs> <laughs>